How's it going, Jeremiahs? I love Arranger pianos. They offer the best of both worlds as you get 88 full-size weighted piano keys, as well as the fun and instant playability from hundreds of sounds and accompaniment rhythms from the Arranger feature in an all-in-one package. In this video, I will compare and review four of the best 88 key digital pianos with Arranger features. They are the controversial Casio PXS3000, the stalwart Yamaha DGX660, the new kid on the block Cork XE20, and the wallet-friendly Casio CDP S350. I will explain to you the pros and cons of each piano and tell you which might be more suitable for your budget and usage scenario. I have done separate in-depth reviews on each each of these pianos so do search for them in my channel if you are interested. I have also found the best prices for you and linked them together with my list of recommended keyboards and pianos in the video description below so do check it out. And if you are a beginner and want to learn how to play songs with chords and rhythm accompaniment you can sign up for my course in the description below. All of the four pianos in this list are full-fledged digital pianos. They come with 88 full-size graded hammer action keys with adjustable touch-sensitive velocity curves. And both the Casio CDP S350 and PXS3000 have textured keys with a matte finishing, which I personally prefer. The Yamaha DGX660 and Korg XE20 have shiny plastic keys which can either feel sticky or slippery to the touch depending on how sweaty your fingers get after extended practice. Key action and key weighting is often a personal preference depending on how heavy or how light you prefer your keys to be. As these digital pianos have a range of features, the other non-piano sounds found in these pianos express better with a less heavy key action. The Yamaha DGX keys feels the heaviest to me, whereas the Casio PXS keys has the lightest feel. The Korg Axe E20 and Casio CDP S350 keys have a more balanced feel which is more suitable for arranger playing. Where key noise is concerned, these pianos are all pretty quiet, but the Yamaha due to its much larger and heavier construction with thicker dampening felt seems to be the one that will continue to be as quiet for years to come. A big selling point of these arranger accompaniment digital pianos is the sheer number of instrument voices inside these keyboards. The Korg Axe E20 tops the list with 705 voices including the deep sampled German and Italian pianos lifted directly from the Korg B2. While the pianos sound good, the lack of configurable string and damper resonance may be a deal breaker for those wanting to tweak the new ones of their piano sound. There are many great electric piano and synth voices, but out of the box, the acoustic instrument voices don't sound as good as the competition. A big advantage of the Korg Axe E20 is the ability to have up to three instrument layers to get really rich and huge combinations. The Casio PXS3000 and CDP S350 both come with pretty much the same 700 voices. However, the PXS3000 has a much better sound engine and it's no surprise here as it costs almost twice as much as the CDP S350. With loads of acoustic pianos and electric pianos, you can most definitely find a unique sound you need.
The acoustic instrument voices are a hit and miss though. Some sound really good while quite a number sound like legacy samples that are included just to make up the numbers. And because you pay almost twice as much for the PXS3000, the main piano voice is highly configurable with parameters such as string and dampened resonance and key noises which is missing in the CDP-S350. Both Casio pianos can layer and split the voices across the keyboard, but the volume mix of each layer cannot be adjusted on the CDP-S350. The 5 year old Yamaha DGX660 is beginning to show its age and at just 554 instrument voices it has the fewest number of sounds in this list. And this list can also be misleading because only 151 of these voices are of the highest quality. The remaining 388 voices are from Yamaha's XG Lite parts bin, so their downloaded MIDI files sound better. Yamaha's legendary AWM Pure CF Grand Piano Sample doesn't disappoint, but it is a far cry from their most recent binaural sampled CFX piano sound. And the DGX660's piano room feature is a unique and convenient way to quickly adjust all the piano related parameters such as damper resonance, reverb and lit position using the large LCD display. In my own personal opinion, Yamaha's acoustic instrument voices such as saxophone, guitar and harmonica sound better than the competition. One important feature of digital pianos is the note polyphony. Playing multiple voice layers with a multi-instrument accompaniment track can gobble up note polyphony quickly. And the Casio PXS and Yamaha DJX has a class-leading 192 note polyphony and their prices definitely do reflect that. The Cork XE20 is unique as it has two sound engines from the Cork B2 and EK50 inside it. As such, the polyphony depends on which sound engine you are using. Layering both of this sound engine will give you a total of 184 notes of polyphony. The Casio CDP-S350, being significantly cheaper than the other pianos here, has 64 notes of polyphony. And if you are just starting out, frankly, it isn't such a deal breaker. While all four pianos in this list supports a triple pedal system for soft, sustenuto and damper functions, I love the Korg XE20 and PXS3000 ability to connect an expression pedal which is great for controlling dynamics in organs, strings and most acoustic instrument voices. What disappoints me though is that only the Casio PXS3000 can change registration presets and trigger rhythm fills using the assignable pedals. And frankly, these are really essential for arranger style playing and I am just disappointed they are not found in the other pianos in this list. When it comes to the rhythm accompaniment feature of these pianos, the Korg XE20 shines the brightest not just in the number of rhythms it has, but also the functionality. As it inherits the Korg EK50 features and layout, it is extremely powerful and versatile in the control and manipulation of the style section. With 280 styles, the XE20 is the leader on this list. Yamaha has only 205 styles whereas both the Casio pianos comes with just 200 styles. The Korg XE20 also comes with 4 variations for every style it has 
and two intros and ending. The accompaniment parts can be dynamically turned on and off on the fly and the volume mix of the accompaniment can be easily adjusted with the fewest button presses. The Casio and Yamaha pianos with only two variations per style and lack of style manipulation function frankly pale in comparison to the Korg XE20. It is also disappointing that Yamaha continues to intentionally cripple the more advanced chord detection mode on most of their Arranger keyboards and pianos such as this DJX 660. You can find links in my description to a complete list of the rhythms for these pianos below. Do you want to learn to play the keyboard with chords like this? I have a proven step-by-step -step course designed for Yamaha Casio and Korg keyboards that will help you to do that. At the end of this course, I will teach you everything you need to know to just open up a music book and start playing your favorite tunes with lush accompaniment rhythms with minimal effort. I will teach you to read music, play chords and use the different sounds and rhythms on your keyboard. Check out the links in the description below for more information. It is an unfortunate omission that the Korg XE20 don't come with any pitch bend or modulation wheels. Thankfully, Yamaha did give us a pitch bend wheel but frankly nothing more. For real-time sound tweaking, the Casio PXS3000 beats every piano in this list with its two live control knobs which can be assigned to many parameters and effects. With so many sounds and rhythms to tweak on arrangers, it is imperative that we get a good number of user memory slots for storing registration presets. And the DGX660 and CDP S350 comes with 32 user preset slots. The Korg XE20 does a little better with 40, but frankly, the PXS3000 has a whopping 96 memory slots. It is a pity that no one took it one step further and included a playlist feature to organize the sounds for your songs. As expected, all the pianos here have a headphone jack, but what about connecting to an external PA system for gigs? The Korg XE20 and Casio PXS3000 are more suited to a professional environment with their dedicated quarter-inch left-right stereo outputs, whereas the Yamaha DGX and Casio CDP S350 are more home-based and therefore share the output port with the headphones. The first time I played on the Korg XE20, the built-in 18W amplified speakers blew me away. In fact, for performing at most intimate venues, the built-in speakers on the XE20 is more than sufficient. The Yamaha DJX has one of the weakest amplification, but it makes up for it by the sheer size and number of speakers it has. The DJX 660 has four built-in speakers whereas all the other pianos in this list have just two. Casio has decided to go hipster and decided that form takes precedence over function. The speakers on the Casio pianos are one of the biggest casualties of the compact home factor. For more technical data on the speaker system of each of these pianos, do check out the links in my description. The Yamaha DGX660 has the most user-friendly user interface with its large LCD screen, large tactile buttons and pretty much all the features accessible without the need of a user manual. 
the Korg XE20 has the most powerful user interface. You can turn on and off voices, rhythm parts and volume mix all on the fly with nice big tactile buttons and without going into any menu system. The Casio CDP-S350 is pretty straightforward to use because it is the most affordable and has the least functionality compared to the other pianos in this list, but it still loses out to Korg and Yamaha in the user-friendliness of the interface. The Casio PXS3000 has loads of potential and power under the hood, but we are let down by the need for form over function. The three-line LCD screen and the need to go through multiple menus to get to the often used functions is a shame. Yamaha marketing their DGX660 as a portable grand is a joke. The DGX is massively heavy at 46 pounds and weighs twice as much as the more portable Korg and Casio pianos in this list. I have a student who tried bringing his DJX 660 to school a few times for band practice and frankly he gave up after a few times. It was just way too heavy. Another Achilles heel of the Yamaha DJX is that it can only run off an electrical outlet. Both Korg and Casio pianos in this list can be operated via an electrical socket or with batteries. While all of these arranger pianos can record multi-track songs as MIDI data to some degree, only the Casio PXS3000 and the Yamaha DJX660 can record audio directly to a USB flash drive for easy sharing with others. And while all the pianos in this list can be used as a MIDI controller for music production with a door, it would have been nice if the pianos come with a built-in USB audio interface for transmitting audio directly to a DAW. A big selling point of the DJX 660 is the microphone input which makes it great as a home entertainment powerhouse. The microphone feature is pretty sophisticated with effects like reverb, chorus, a multiband EQ and even a compressor. The Casio PXS3000 is the only one in this list with wireless Bluetooth connectivity. But the quirk is that you can send Bluetooth audio from your mobile devices to the PXS3000 speakers but the keyboard cannot transmit your playing to external Bluetooth speakers. This would frankly be a great feature for buskers using portable Bluetooth amplifiers for an absolutely wire-free setup. Unfortunately, that is the quirk of the PXS3000 Bluetooth. Both Casio pianos work well with the Casio Codana Play for piano app on both iOS and Android, and the Korg XE20 comes with a generous software bundle. Korg XE20 owners get registration codes for three months of free subscription to the School Learning app to the Korg Gadget LE and Korg Module app. The Yamaha DJX660 is showing its age and it just comes as it is with the piano. There isn't any specific Yamaha app that comes with it. Do destroy that like button. If you found my review of these four 88 key digital pianos with a range of features useful and informative, don't forget to check out the links in my description for more detailed information. My name is Jeremy C and I'll see you in my next video.